Well, back on this very date in 1989, KLAS TV aired a live interview with a shadowy man who didn't use his real name. Now, the story he told was pretty outrageous, but 30 years later, it is mm -hmm. still causing waves. Bob Lazar's allegations about alien technology being tested in the Nevada desert ignited worldwide interest and put the then secret military base known as Area 51 on the map. George Knapp is here with a look at how far the story has spread in the three decades since that interview. George? Well, it turned out a long way. Uh, for the live interview, we used a pseudonym. We called him Dennis. That turned out to be the name of his boss at a place called S4, a facility built into the side of a mountain, disguised to look like natural terrain. It would be another seven months before the world learned the guy's real name was Bob Lazar, but the public didn't wait. The race to Area 51 was on, and the cultural ripples are still being felt. <laughs> A line of people waiting to see the premiere of the Bob Lazar documentary in downtown L.A. last December stretched around the city block. 1,600 enthusiastic fans jammed into an historic theater to see the film and hobnob with its director and Lazar himself. It all started 30 years ago with an anonymous interview on KLAS-TV and turned Area 51 into a Hollywood staple. You, you could have just handed me a piece of a UFO from Area 51. And the coup de gras. Area 51. There have never been any spacecraft. There's no Area 51. <laughs> There's no recovered spaceship. Oh, excuse me, Mr. President. That's not entirely accurate. It would probably take an Indiana Jones-sized warehouse to stash all the pop culture references to Area 51, the oh-so-secret facility, the place that did not officially exist for decades, is the rock star of military bases, literally. There's a rock band named Area 51 and another named Element 115, which is supposedly the fuel for flying saucers. There's an Area 51 video game, an Area 51 bar, lots of Area 51 gift shops, jerky stores, a dance troupe, a fireworks company. Almost weekly, new lines of Lazar-themed merchandise pop up online. Posters and t-shirts and other goodies. There's a Groom Lake red wine, an alien-themed legal brothel, and a Bob Lazar song. How many classified military bases become the namesake of a AAA baseball franchise with a space alien mascot? Of course, the X-Files show featured Area 51 in several episodes. It's a highlight of more than a dozen books and countless magazine articles as well, along with reams of editorial cartoons in the Review Journal and other newspapers, some of which poke fun at saucer-chasing reporters. I think a, a lot of people believe what I said. And Lazar's tale set off a stampede to the area around Groom Lake. In nearby Rachel, the bar and grill became the Little Ailey Inn, and its owners have capitalized on the public fascination with all things E.T. I have candles, I have patches, I have pins. Miles to the east near Heiko, there's a rival alien research center, which has its own line of otherworldly merchandise. The businesses are bookends on the world's only extraterrestrial highway, dedicated back in 1996 by savvy governor Bob Miller, who combined his marketing event with the unveiling of the blockbuster film Independence Day, wherein Area 51 saves the world from an ET invasion. My name's Bob Lazar. I'm known for working at a classified base. Filmmaker Jeremy Corbell says his documentary about Lazar personalizes the mythology that is sprouted from Lazar's claims. I think getting to know Bob Lazar as the person is a huge part of the story that just simply couldn't be told over the 30 years because he wasn't willing to let people into his life. The UFO subject has done nothing good for him. And you have to understand that he hasn't tried to profiteer off of it. It's really harmed his life in a lot of ways. So getting him to open up personally and for the viewer to be able to see the human being. As for Lazar, most of the last 30 years, he's tried to avoid the UFO spotlight. Oh, you just, you want some of the fame. <laughs> the fame? You know, there's no big dump truck dropping money off at my house every Thursday night. There's no, I'm not out for any fame. I really have better things to do. Generally, people have to twist my arm to come out and do things like that. As you know, you're the arm twister. <laughs>
I don't think he meant that in a nice way. <laughs> For most of the last 30 years, Lazar has tried to keep a low profile. He made two public appearances on behalf of the documentary film and is making a third this weekend at a UFO fest in Oregon. He declined any payment for the film, not a cent. And by the way, my name is listed in the credits because I was interviewed for it as well. So how does Lazar's story match up with recent admissions by the Pentagon that has been secretly studying UFOs after all and has been trying to figure out the technology? Tonight at 11, we'll hear more of Lazar's thoughts on that. And we have additional links and materials on our website. And Time you know, went by fast. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and George, too, it, should, it can't be overstated the importance that your role had in that. It yeah. took a lot of courage mm -hmm. for both of you to well, do that story. And for Channel 8. Channel yeah. 8 stuck yeah. by this all the way. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Well, thank you.